Ya, yeah, now. Hey, the robot beer. Where's that sheet we have? Let's all take a no. Nobody brought theirs, of course. Oh, okay. So one out of ten isn't bad. I have it just for reference. I know I, I, I have it with you. You need it? No, no. I was just gonna. If everyone had it, we were gonna go over it, Danny. Yeah. Ahmed, you ready? All right. Salam alaikum, Allah wa barakatuh. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah. All right. So everyone understands Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, correct? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who creates in the 100% perfect sense of the word. He is the only one who regulates affairs in the 100% perfect sense of the word. He is the one who uh, has the ownership and the authority and the dominion, the sovereignty in a 100% complete sense of the word. Not like when you have, yours is limited, yours can end and so many other things. So we said in Tawheed al basically, it's affirming that Allah is the only Lord, the only creator, sustainer, giver of life, the one who provides for you, your wealth, and all these other things. And we said that it has to do with the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now I put in capital letters in the sheet I passed out last week, Tawheed al does not guarantee paradise, nor does it get one out of the hellfire. Now you should all know the answer to why. Why? Because... Hmm? Well, I was not here last week. Hold on. Were you here last week? Monday? No, I was here. Okay. Last. Okay. You got one. But you didn't get one. Okay, great. So now everybody has one. So, uh, it does not guarantee paradise, nor does it get one out of the hellfire. What's the proof for that? How do we know that? If you, if you believe in, in that Allah is the creator, it doesn't guarantee you paradise, nor does it get one out of the hellfire. We just drew it on the board. Possibly, yeah. Because you don't believe in Tawheed in a complete sense. That's true, but when, when we go to the next level, but now just speaking on this level now. There's no worship. Hmm? There's no right way of worship. And? There would be a difference between a Muslim and a Christian. Yeah, everybody was in that room. Remember that room? It was hot and smoking and the drinks were cold and you know, everyone, no one spoke with a British accent. There were many folks in that room. You had pagans in the room. They believed in it. Not in the complete sense, but they believed in it. You had certain Christians who believed in it. You had Jews who believed in it. Zoroastrians who believed in it. You had Hindus who believed in it. Zulu who believed in it. So it doesn't guarantee you... Uh, doesn't guarantee paradise, nor does it get one out of the hellfire. And that's why we move to the second level of Tawheed. Here, you want to hold this until... Uh, yeah. Oh, no, actually, I need to read from it. Sorry. I'm serious. Um, so, Tawheed, <coughs> second type of Tawheed. So now I'm going to draw a miniature pyramid here. And we said, this one was Rububiya. Now this one is Tawheed al Okay, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya or Tawheed al ubudi I'm going to give you both names, we're going to understand both names and it's not that difficult. Basically in this type of Tawheed, the second type of Tawheed, it's to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only one who should be worshipped. Worshipped. Allah is the only one who should be worshipped. This is what the second type of Tawheed is all about. It's called Tawheed al uluhiyya And it has another name, Tawheed al ubudiyya Both names are valid. Uluhiyya, Ubudiyya. Now, Uluhiyya, what's the root there? And again, these words are strong, maybe confusing, but once you know the root, you'll never be confused, inshallah. Uluhiyya from? Ilah. Who said that? Good man. Uluhiyya from? Ilah. So here, Ilah. Uluhiya, ilah. What's ilah? Anything that is of that anything that is worshipped. Anything that is worshipped. Underline worshipped. Ilah. Anything that's worshipped. Tawhid al uluhiya. Now here, 
Tawheed al ubudiyah what's the root? Ibadah, right? Ibadah, which is? Worship. So you see? So there's no really big contradiction here. It's called Tawheed al uluhiyah when we attribute it to... Oh, I'm going to get you here. If we attribute it to one of them here, it will be... If we attribute it to Allah, it's going to be one of these two. If we attribute it to the people, it's going to be one of these two. Now, which one, if we attribute this, the name to Allah, which one would it be? Uluhiya or Ubudiya? Huh? Top one. Top one? Bottom one. Bottom one? Yeah. And the answer is? Both of them. This one. Top one. Because Allah is the ilah. So if we attribute it to Allah, it's Tawheed al uluhiyah because we, He's the ilah, He's the one that's worthy of being worshipped. If we attribute it to the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to his slaves, then it's ubudiyah because we're the ones who do the ibadah, right? Oh, yes? Okay. Yes, no? And so that's why going back to our sheet here, we said that this, is, this type of tawheed is based on the actions of his servants. Yeah? Ubudiyah. So in this type of tawheed, we do stuff. In this type of tawheed, the rububiyah, it's on the actions of Allah. This one is on the actions of his servants. So, we said again our definition of Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah is that it's to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only one who is worthy of worship. worship. What is worship? Who can give us a definition of worship? I'll give you the, 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 like one of the agreed upon definitions of worship because it's quite encompassing, very nice. That basically, um, it's right there. Worship is a word that encompasses all the actions and the words, not just actions, actions and words that Allah likes and accepts from His servants. Okay? So, all the things that you say and do that Allah likes and accepts, whether they're done in private or in secret, these are acts of worship. So, sayings can be an act of worship, like so, dhikr of Allah is an act of worship. It's a saying. Reciting the Quran, you say things, right? It's an act of worship. What else? Da'wah. Calling people to Allah. Or telling people, you know, don't do this and don't do that. It's worship. It's saying. Now, action can be so examples of action that's worship. Smiling. Smiling. Praying. And speaking of smiling, please smile at each other. Okay, I know there's this whole thug, bad guy mentality. Like, I saw some of you greeting each other. Look. Take it easy, <laughs> you know, smile and stuff. You know, brothers do, do these funny thug hugs and stuff, and like all this stuff. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, so action. What else? Action is that it's worship. The easy stuff, prayer, right? It's all action. So th it can be sayings. It can be actions that Allah loves and accepts. That means this word loves and accepts. That means it has to be done the right way. Otherwise, Allah wouldn't love it. If you don't pray the right way, like you make up a prayer. So that means uh, probably you know, Allah, won't, uh, well, Allah won't love it because if you're not doing it the right way, you're not doing it the way the Prophet ﷺ taught us to do. Okay. So, directing all types of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what this type of tawheed is all about. So now we want to talk about, um, again, this word ilah. Ilah is anything that's worshipped. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're saying in this type of Tawheed that He's the only ilah. Right? He's the only ilah. But in the Quran, Allah will mention other ilahs. So how do I understand this? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا تدعو مع الله إلها آخر Do not call with Allah another ilah. Don't call on another ilah with Allah. So Allah is saying another ilah. But here we're studying that there's only one ilah. And many, many other ayat. Uh, like whoever calls another uh, another God along with Allah, or do you call these false ilahs besides Allah? Are you calling on them? So now we're saying there's only one ilah, and the ayat are saying that there are other aliha. So how do we understand this? How do we understand it? The Quran is referencing something that people attributed already to other things. It's just a matter of 
Ex you're probably right. Just explain a bit more. Mm -hmm. Which is saying that these things are gods. No. No? What is it saying? Thank you, sir. Excellent. So basically, we said ilah is anything that's worshipped. That's why you don't translate ilah as God. You know one joke I can't stand? It's a horrible joke. Sometimes I travel and people tell it to me like I've never heard it before. You know? And you have to pull one of those fake ones like, ah, ah, ah. but you're wrong. <laughs> you know? Because so, people come up to me, they're like, um, you know, I spoke to an atheist and I told him, uh, you believe there is no God? And uh, to become Muslim, there is no God but God. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean there is no God but God? They say, la ilaha illallah means there is no God but God. And what kind of sentence is that anyways? There is no God but God. There is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. Because if anyone worships anything, it becomes their ilah. People want to worship a tree, it becomes their ilah. Now, is it a true God in the true sense? No. No. That's why, and these are, like you were saying, these were names people gave it, gave these things. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, <coughs> that uh, if anything else being an ilah except Allah, it's a false ilah, and it's just a name, like you said. Just a name. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and remember we said when we quote the Quran, try to see where the evidence is in the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In hiya illa asma'un sammaytumuha antum wa aba'ukum ma anzalallahu biha min sultan. Allah is saying, now listen to the evidence, Allah is saying, these are just names that you and your forefathers have made up. And Allah has not re like sent down any authority or, or made it legitimate, these names. These are just names you made up. So you make this your ilah, you make that your ilah, but they're not true ilahs. Anyone understand? Everyone? Okay? A question. Yes, sir. Uh, al Alat was one of the, the gods that they worshipped. Mm -hmm. In that area. <coughs> yes. It's just putting a at the end of Is it something as a, they, they did as mockery? Or? No, no, no. We're actually coming to that, to the, all the, to the false gods. We'll come to that and we'll see even how things get to the level of becoming something that's worshipped. So anyways, the whole point is in this type of Tawheed, we direct worship to Allah alone. Very simple, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِنُ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ You alone do we worship. Alright, so now let's, let's talk about something uh, interesting here. Let's explain, because we're talking about kalima of Tawheed. What is the, 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 word, the kalima of Tawheed? The sentence of Tawheed is, is what? Mm -hmm, very good. So, so let's talk about this and let's start all the way here. Okay, we're just going to do the first half here. So when you say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, what does it mean? What does Ashhadu mean? I bear witness. Okay, I bear witness or I testify, right? <coughs> so, or you bear witness. I testify or I bear witness. So here, when you testify, usually you have to be quite sure, right? Right? Like when you go to court and you testify, you have to be sure, otherwise you won't be called up as a witness. So if, they, if you, they call you up on the stand, first of all when you testify, part of it is that it's done in front of people. You can't testify alone in a room with nobody there. When you testify, you testify in front of people. So here, when you testify in court, you have to be quite sure, otherwise they probably wouldn't invite you up as a witness. So they ask you, who's the guy who stole your Pokemon. Do you think they'll accept your testimony? No. no, because that means you to testify you have to be sure. sure, you have to be certain. Yes? You have to be sure. So, the fact that we say Ashhadu here means you're sure. It can't be half-half. Plus any issue of aqidah anyways can't be half-half. So here you're testifying, you're bearing witness that anna that there is, la means no, ilah. Uh. Yeah, an ilah is anything that is worthy of worship. Remember? Anything that is worshipped, sorry. Illa, except. 
and Allah, Allah. Great. So, everyone writing this down? No? You guys are going to forget all of this. You guys want a quiz? No. I, I've got some ready quizzes. I'll just pop them out. It's open note. Huh? Open? What? What's open note? To see you. Hmm? Kids are so smart these days. What does open note do? Oh, hmm? All the kids are like Okay, kids, we're going to have an open note exam and everybody will get a lollipop at the end, too. Huh? All right. So here, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Let's understand what it's saying. Ashhadu, you're certain because you're testifying. Otherwise, you wouldn't testify. You're not sure that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. So now let's break this into two parts. If we break it down right here, here, the first part is doing what? It's naf. Nafi wa ithbat. Nafiun wa ithbat. Negation. Very good. Negation. What does that mean? Everyone understand these terms? What does it mean, negation? How is this negating? It's negating anything else being an ilah. How so? It's saying that there's no God. Very good. Very good. That's it. It's quite simple. It's saying that there is nothing worthy of worship at all. Except now the next part is affirmation. affirmation. So here he's saying no way, nothing should be worshipped here. You're negating worship from anything else. Trees, dollars, whatever it is, idols, graves, nothing should be worshipped except Allah. You're affirming it here. Now you're saying only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be worshipped. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Okay, and if you add to it, of course, وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and that you're bearing witness, you're testifying again that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa taala, um, and and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which one? Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Abdullah. Very good. And one time I asked a, a room full of you know younger kids and said, what's the last name of the prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One guy put his hand up. I said, mashallah. He said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. <laughs> Said, let me smack somebody. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, I used to show the five reasons a lot of times. I have some stories. I have some stories. So, anyways. Um, all right. So, la ilaha illallah. It's serious. I don't know any hadith about la ilaha illallah that it's serious business. Anybody? Oh yeah. Whoever's last words. Where La ilaha illallah, he will enter into paradise. So I know what everybody's thinking now. You can do it, right? That's what they do these days, right? I can do it. You know, you're in the middle of a rumble, some thug pulls out a gat, and he's even holding it sideways. He's like, What's up, sucker? <laughs> and you're like, Ashhad wa la ilaha. Pow! Like, I could do that. You know what? A lot of folks can't do that. A lot of folks can't do that, people. There's a doctor. <laughs> There's a doctor. And he said, you know, he, he says in a Muslim country, he said 36 people died at his hands. And not because he's a bad doctor, but people die. 36 people died. He said, out of 36, I would tell people, قُلْ لَا إِلَهِ لَا لَا إِلَهِ لَا 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 He said, just one. One of them did it. Other folks can't do it. You know why? Let me tell you something. If it doesn't roll off your tongue easily, you're not going to say it. This is something that happened um, yesterday. A friend of mine was telling me that he, uh, he was going to the masjid and a car almost hit him. You know what he said? He said, oh, sugar. He said the other word. Starts with an S-H. He said the bad word. He said, now the guy came this close to me. He said, imagine he hit me and I died. That would have been my last word. Im can you imagine the S word or the F word being your last word? And then on the Day of Judgment, you're resurrected doing what you were doing on earth. So people on the Day of Judgment who died in Hajj, they'll be saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. People reciting the Qur'an will be reciting the Qur'an. You'll be saying, Oh, shh! That's not good. <laughs> but people, they get used to that. They get used to the bad words. 
and people now they argue things oh such dumb arguments people use bad words they're some of the dumbest people on the planet that's for sure right the other thing is the arguments they give are dumber than them um, I'm expressing myself oh oh you're so clever there are no more adjectives and adverbs in the English language you have to throw the F word everywhere to express yourself foul mouth I'm expressing myself oh mashallah Oh, you know how to express yourself. Now, the problem with, with bad words, because now bad words is cool, right? You know, The guy said this, I cursed him out. People come boast to each other about how they curse somebody out. I let him have it. Oh, mashallah. Mashallah, you're a hero now. Cursing someone's mother out. What if on the Day of Judgment, everyone's going to get their books that has everything you said and did. Imagine now, you're going through your book. Because 50,000 years, the people are standing waiting for the judgment to begin. When it begins, books start falling into, your, into people's hands. So you get your book. And you start looking through it now. And it has stuff you forgot about. Good deeds, bad deeds, everything. Then you come to the F chapter. Your F word. And here you are. Page after page of you being so thug-like and cool. F word. All over. Pages full of F word. F word. Did I say anything else in this dunya? F word. F word. F word. How thick is this chapter? You lift it up. Like, oh. F word. F word. F word. F word. F word. F word. How many times did you say this? Now imagine who's writing that when you say the F word every time. Angels. How does Allah describe the angels? Kiram and Katibi. His most honored creatures. And you're making them write this? Honored creatures of Allah. And here they are. F word, what's the matter with this guy? F word, F word, F word, this guy doesn't fear Allah, F word, F word. And here you are, oh, I'm expressing myself. Alright, is that your excuse on the Day of Judgment? So don't use bad words, people, ever. It's not cool, it's not cool at all. It's not cool. Any bad word is not cool. It's extremely uncool. Alright, anyways, how did we get into that? I have no idea. Where were, what were we talking about? Yeah. The, your last words being La ilaha illallah, you go to paradise. Alright, well, anyone else? Any other hadith about La ilaha illallah? Hmm? Uh, also, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever dies and he knows La ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah, he will go to paradise. How about this other hadith? The Prophet ﷺ said, La ilaha illallah is the key to paradise. So we all believe in La ilaha illallah, right? They're like, okay, khalas, I got the key. I'm twirling the key around. Uh huh. That's why one of the great scholars' name is Wahb ibn Munabbih. He said, La ilaha illallah, it's the key to paradise. But every key, every key has its asnan. These things. Zoom in. Here, yeah, so you don't have to see my face up close and shock people at home. So here, these things. What are these things? What are they called? Teeth. Teeth, huh? <laughs> In Arabic, they call them a stand. They're called words in English. So every key has words. These little things, they make the key work. Right? If I, if I give you a key that's all f sweet and flat, and you're like, oh, what is this open? Yeah. So these things, la ilaha illallah, it doesn't work by itself. You need these things. So that's your belief in la ilaha illallah. You're certain in la ilaha illallah. You follow la ilaha illallah. Most people, they want to say it. They think Islam is a club. You know, it's like a membership card. Especially the thug Muslims now. Like, yeah, what's up, what's up? No, salamu alaikum even. Like, you Muslim, yeah, Muslim, yeah. Ayat and ayat and all this stuff. And then they have the membership card. You're Muslim, yeah, I've got a membership card right here, Muslim. You pray and stuff? now, but I got the card. My name is Abdullah or Abdurrahman or whatever it is. They think that you can just be Muslim just by having the name and that's a club. That's it. La ilaha illallah, you, get, you gotta have things here to make the key work. So that's gotta be your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Alright, it's got to be your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the certainty following la ilaha illallah. You can't turn your back to la ilaha illallah and think you're one of the crew, you know. You got your posse and your grills and everything with you. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> alright people. So, how much time do we have, yaakhi? Hmm? Uh, how much? 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Let's start. Um, <clears throat> so, uh... We we're talking about worship, right? So we're saying Tawheed al uluhiyah Someone tell me what we said so far. Somebody give me a summary. Yes? Anybody? 
Naam? Around worship, it deals with worship. It deals with worship, that we direct every act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we say it, we do it, every act of worship is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not for anyone else with Allah or anyone else besides Allah. And just very quickly, let me talk about the... Hmm. Anyway, so an act of worship could be done with the heart, just such as... How, give me an act of worship with the heart. Hmm? Seeing something Link it to Allah, possibly. Link it to Allah. An act of worship done with the heart. Last time you talked about the person that wanted to go get drunk, but on his way to his car, he felt bad about it, so he decided not to okay, go. Okay, so he had the khashya of Allah, right, in his heart. How about love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Taqwa, right? It's all in the heart. So that's how an act of worship can be in the heart. How about it can be in the tongue? We said like dhikr, da'wah, Quran, in the limbs, like prayer. And it can even be done through your wealth, right? How? Yeah, zakat, charity, you slaughter something for, any for the sake of Allah. So, great. And um, let me see, so we do the three pillars of worship. So, well, what's, I'm probably going to skip them. What's so, I guess, wrong with it? What nullifies this? Mm, 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 mm. Serious, serious question over here. What nullifies, what ruins this type of tawheed? Good question. Are Jews and Christians in this too? No, just Muslims. Just Muslims. Because we said they do it in the way, the Muslims are the ones who worship Allah in the way He wants to be worshipped. Right? right? So, sujood, wudu, qibla, Quran, not just go on your knees and whatever it is. That's why I put only the, the Muslims in the second category. But, <coughs> so what is, what this is the, the question of the day? What nullifies this type of Tawheed? What ruins it? What negates it? We said, now this is just flip it around, it's really easy. This type of Tawheed, you only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the opposite of it would be Shirk, excellent, good man. Shirk, that you worship something else. Here we go. Shirk. That has nothing to do with a green ogre and a donkey that's annoying. <laughs> Great jokes, huh? Great jokes. Thank you, sir. Everybody else, you're breaking rule number two. You have to laugh at every one of my jokes. Okay, so great. So, shirk <laughs> is uh, basically when you direct, it's the greatest sin first of all. Allah warns of the Quran, in the Quran of shirk more than anything else, Allah is warning you of shirk. Of worshipping anything else besides Him or worshipping something with Him. So, even if you worship something with Allah, it's a big deal. What if somebody says, look, I'm going to worship Allah 99% of the time and only 1% is going to go to this other thing. Is that okay? Just 1% people, it's not okay? Okay, how do we know it? The pro uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a, in a hadith, <coughs> in a Qudsi hadith, yeah, yeah, a Qudsi hadith is basically a hadith that has a statement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's not the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a Qudsi hadith, mean, meaning the Prophet would say, Allah says, and it's not an ayah, Allah says, and Allah said, Ana aghna shuraka an I am the lead, I am in need of partners in the least. Whoever worships me and something else with me, I will direct all of his worship to me, to that object. So if you say, I'm going to direct 99% of my worship to Allah, 1% to something else, Allah is going to take the 99% of you of what you did for Him and give it to the other thing. Because Allah does not want partners in the least. You see how serious it is? So you can't even say, oh, I, I worship this other thing 0.5% of the time. Well, guess what? What's going to happen? Allah is going to take the 99.5 and give it to this other thing. That's shirk. Now, shirk has two types, major and minor. <coughs>